Hello, I'm Rebecca Smithorn, cover conductor and lecturer with the National Philharmonic, and welcome to Composers in Crisis, where we talk about composers whose lives and art were not just disrupted, but actually transformed during times of global crisis. Today, we're going to talk about John Crigliano, who responded to the AIDS epidemic with a powerful musical memorial in his first symphony. Now, AIDS first appeared in the United States in 1981 as a brutal, mysterious illness that primarily affected gay men. And government inaction, fear of the disease, and homophobia meant that those who contracted AIDS were often left with little support or care. And creative communities were hit especially hard, with young artists and musicians and writers suddenly getting sick and dying within just a few years. One of the many friends that Crigliano lost was Sheldon Skolnick, who was a well-known concert pianist. In fact, Crigliano was with him when he got the news that he'd been diagnosed with AIDS. And at the time, Crigliano was composer in residence with the Chicago Symphony, and he'd been planning to write a concerto grosso for them, which is just an abstract symphonic work. But after witnessing Skolnick's diagnosis, he said, I just had a radical change of thought. And I thought, why am I writing a concerto grosso, which I do not care about, when everyone I know is dying, which I do care about. So inspired by the AIDS Memorial Quilt, Corigliano decided to compose his Symphony No. 1 as a musical patchwork, remembering friends that he was losing or had already lost. The first movement is called Apologue of Rage and Remembrance, and it was written for Skolnick. And despite being in the late stages of the disease, Skolnick actually attended rehearsals of the piece, as well as all three performances of the premiere. Crigliano says that the first movement alternates between the tension of anger and the bittersweet nostalgia of remembering. And it begins with this kind of long orchestral scream. Skolnick was a concert pianist, and one of his favorite pieces to play was a tango by Isaac Albanese. And later in the symphony's first movement, Crigliano creates this almost ghost-like homage to his friend by having a pianist play fragments of that Albanese tango off stage so that it's just barely audible over this slow-moving string line. About 20 years earlier, Crigliano wrote a set of piano duets called gazebo dances, and he dedicated the Tarantella to his friend Jack Roman, who was a music executive and an enthusiastic pianist. Now, a Tarantella is a frantic Italian dance from around the 15th century that was thought to cure the insanity that came from a tarantula bite. In the notes for the symphony, Crigliano writes, the association of madness and my piano piece proved both prophetic and bitterly ironic when my friend, whose wit and intelligence were legendary in the music field, became insane as a result of AIDS dementia. 
The second movement in memory of Roman is an orchestrated version of that Tarantella. <laughs> is called Giulio's Song, and it's in memory of the cellist Giulio Sorrentino. He and Corigliano had once improvised a cello and piano duet, and they actually recorded the session. So Corigliano went back to those tapes and chose one of the beautiful cello lines that Giulio created to use as the beginning of the third movement. And during this movement, Crigliano creates a patchwork of other names as well. The librettist William Hoffman wrote brief phrases about 10 mutual friends they had lost. And Crigliano set those phrases to music, erased the words, and wove the remaining tunes through the movement. And in fact, while we know the names of those memorialized today, 30 years after the symphony's premiere, at the time, Crigliano did not identify them. This was in part because he wanted the piece to be universal, for listeners to be able to think of their own lost loved ones. But it was also because there was still a lot of stigma around the disease. Even though the first performance took place in 1990, nearly a decade after AIDS had first been identified. Sheldon Skolnick died one week after the symphony's premiere, and his obituary in the Chicago Tribune said that he died of a long illness, a phrase often used to avoid identifying AIDS victims. Works of art like Crigliano's Symphony and the AIDS Quilt, along with the tireless work of activists, made the disease visible, relatable, and spurred on the research that still saves lives today. And they also ensured that the people who died of AIDS weren't forgotten. In the last movement, called the epilogue, Crigliano said he wanted to convey a sense of timelessness by creating a series of slow sonic waves. Speaking about that movement, Crigliano said, remember your friends that you lost, and they won't be dead in a sense. They will be alive because you're remembering them. I hope you take some time to listen to Crigliano's Symphony No. 1, and experience the powerful and life-affirming act of remembering. <laughs>